Fellas, looking forward to the game. I might start you off with a quote from uh, Kieran Crowley, who is the Italian coach and obviously knows New Zealand uh, rugby very well. Indeed, his brother lives next door to the Barrett family. So uh, that's what's going on in New Zealand. Small place. <laughs> yeah. New Zealand's a small place. Yeah. So what he said, Rob, is I've never seen a bad New Zealand team, but the world rugby at the top level is after getting very close. Everyone's exposed to the same coaching, the same SNC. And so he says, a few years ago, New Zealand were dominant. They were ahead of all the other countries in their approach, but everybody has caught up. So it's not that New Zealand have necessarily gone backwards, it's that everyone else has caught up. Agree, disagree? Um, strongly disagree. I think the reason New Zealand aren't the team like New Zealand in the past because they don't have the quality of players like they did. Now, they can still beat anyone on their day, but if we take the 2011-2015 World Cup winning team and you just scan through a couple of the names on it, you've got McCaw, Kieran Reid, you've got Dan Carter, Mananu, Conrad Smith, Ben Smith, Israel Dagg. These are generational players that will be famous for the next 50 years in New Zealand. Mm. I personally don't think this team has any of them. Okay. Ardi Sevea, you could argue, is, is generational. Bolden, yes, but maybe a little bit past it now. I don't think they have the same stardust mm. as teams gone before them. Mm. It's interesting, Robbie. I, I actually agree with Robbie with that, but I think, I think there's some truth in that. I think that certainly in my lifetime, I've never seen the top teams beating each other as often as they have. So even if we say South Africa are red hot, you know, not red hot, but are favourites, very hot. They've lost to Australia, uh, New Zealand, Ireland twice and France in the last 12 months. So teams are beating each other, but I, I agree with Robbie that this, this is not the greatest New Zealand side I've ever mm. seen. Yeah, I, th I think it's a bit of a mix. I definitely agree with that. You know, you look at the World Cup winning teams uh, of a decade ago with, with, with New Zealand and how much stronger that th they were. Uh, but you look at the influx of New Zealand coaches that are in world rugby. So I definitely think it is certainly a mixture and you know what Kieran is saying there the exposure uh, yes. to, to how a team is potentially run a lot of the New Zealand ethos that has been put through so I think it is definitely a mixture of both because yes. it was always said Matt New Zealand thinking was ahead of everybody else mm -hmm. and to Ian's point the coaches have gone around the world and brought that thinking around the world yeah I, I put a twist on that I, 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 and that's that's right and that's why I think we're all failing because we're all trying to burn New Zealand you can't be better than, than the originals France are playing a different way Ireland are playing a different way. South Africa are playing a different way. Okay. So there's your, there's your top four. Mm. And they're all playing different. Australia, we're the third island of New Zealand and we're, we're a very, very poor imitation. Mm. They can't do it. So you've got to find your own, your own uh, beat of your own drum. And the other countries have done that. And I think you're exactly right. And if the last few years have showed us anything, that the way New Zealand play rugby doesn't have to be the only way. Yes. That you can play your, your own stamp on it, yeah. you can put your your nation's DNA into how you play rugby 100%. and still beat New Zealand. Yes. Okay, interesting.